I mentioned earlier how there are three major conceptual differences between After Effects and Nuke. Here we'll take a look at the first conceptual difference, the node-based compositing in Nuke versus the layer-based compositing in After Effects. Of course, After Effects was designed to do motion graphics, whereas Nuke was designed to do very large and complex visual effects shots. So After Effects puts the animation up front and hides the effects, while Nuke puts the effects up front and hides the animation. And it does everything with nodes. So let's take a look at where are these nodes. Here are the tool tabs over here where they hide the nodes. If I click this pop-up, here are all the nodes for color correction. Here are the nodes for filtering, like blurs. Here are the nodes for merging, for putting two or more images together. And here are the transforms for changing the shape, size, or position of things. So to bring in an image, we're going to need a node. So we'll go up to the Image tab and select a Read node to read in an image. We'll browse to where our media lives and select our target object here, the Jetfighter small.tiff. And we get a little preview over here. I like that very much. We'll open this. And when you bring in a node, Nuke immediately opens the property panel over here. This is where I make all my adjustments to the node. But I don't see anything in the viewer. And I won't see anything in until I hook it up to a viewer node. There we go. So I need a background. So I need another read node. So I'll go up to the read node, browse to my background, and I'll take a little preview. Yep, that's my background. I like that. I'll say open. And now I can connect the second input to my viewer. And now you can see right here as I toggle, I can look at two different images. Toggle, toggle, toggle. All right. Next. I want to composite the jet over the background. To do that, I need a compositing node, or what Nuke calls a merge node. So I'll come up here to the Merges tab, and I'll select a merge node. Now, on the merge node, you want to hook the A side to the foreground, which is our jet, the B side to the background, which is our cloud flyby. And then we'll hook the viewer up to the merge node in order to see our composite. There we go. And now I can scroll up to the shot. I have a composite. So how do I do a color correction? Again, I'm going to need a node. So my first question is, where do I put the color correction? Obviously, in this case, it'll be after the read node and before the composite. So let's go get a color correct, a grade node. Now, Nuke has very sophisticated color correction operations. We're just going to use a nice, simple one that's easy to follow. And I just hook that in right there. And of course, Nuke has opened up the property panel for my color correction here. So now I can adjust, for example, the gamma up a little bit, and I'd like to make that jet match the background. So I'm going to maybe increase the red a titch and perhaps a, a little bit more green. I'll close that. So let's say I like that. And one of the nice features is if I want to see that operation toggled on and off, I can just select the node and do the disable key. And that way I get to see the effect of that uh, node very, very, very clearly. Okay, we'll leave that on. Next, how do I do a transform? Okay, again, I'm going to need a transform node. And again, I ask the question, where should it go? Should it go between the read and the grade or between the grade and the merge? Frankly, it doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the grade node and then come over here and add a transform and Nuke will hook it in for me automatically. All right, there we are. And again, my property panel is opened up here. I have on-screen controls where I can you know, reposition, I can do a rotate, do a scale, you know, all the usual stuff. I'm going to reset that back to default. I also have these sliders over here. I'd like to do it that way. That's cool. I can also type in the numbers like that. Or I can drive these with math expressions, or I can link them to other parameters in my script. So I have several different ways of doing the animation. So let me set all those back to default. And now let's take a quick look at doing some keyframe animation. Like all systems, to do keyframe animation, the first thing you do is put the playhead where you want to start your first keyframe. We'll go to the Transform tab and say Enable Keyframing for the Translate and Enable Keyframing for the Rotate. Let me pull out a little bit of my viewer. So I'll position my jet at the beginning of my first keyframe. I'll slide to the end of the shot and position him to my last frame. And as I scrub through the shot, I go, that's really boring. So let me run them out here. Why don't we add a little whoop to the curve? There we are. OK. Now I need to put the rotate animation in to match up with my flight path. Like 
any good system, you can jump to the previous keyframe here, click, and I'll just turn on some rotation, align my jet up with the flight path, jump to the next keyframe here, and dial that guy in, and then jump to the last frame, and we're good. All right, so now I'll turn off all my on-screen controls, so I got a nice clean picture to look at, we'll home the viewer, and I'll play my clip. We're caching this to the timeline, so I'll get a nice real-time preview after I've got one good rendering pass. All right, so that's a quick look at the node-based compositing. Now let's take a look at that second major conceptual difference between Nuke and After Effects.